Right now we're going to talk about C-sharp one-dimensional arrays, and by the time that this video is over, you're going to be a master at declaring arrays and setting arrays equal to values. So what we're going to do is create a new project. So we're going to do the process that you guys are all very familiar with by now, and we're going to do a C-sharp Windows empty project, and call the empty project arrays1. Perfect. So now we know. We also know what to do. Right click. We're going to add a new item, and the new item that we're going to add is the lovely code file. And I'm going to call this code file array one. See, our project is named arrays one, and our code file is named array one. <laughs> Excellent. With this video tutorial, I'm going to start it off slightly different than the other ones. As you recall, we normally start off with the call to the system. So we use the using system statement in the way beginning and then the rest of our program assumes statement. Now just in case you don't know what that means, what I'm going to do is this. I'm not going to declare using system. I'm just going to declare my class. All right, I'm going to have class arrays and within here we're going to do the public public static main function. And if I do control F5, it's going to come up with an error. Ah, so this is the first time that we've enc encountered an error. So this is telling us that it builded with an error. Would I like to continue with the last successful build? Well, I've, I could select yes, but this project has not had a successful build yet. So I'm going to select no. And this can also bring us a little bit of an introduction to this bottom output box here. So when you do compile and you do have an error, it gives you an option here where it says error. There's one error. There's zero warnings and the zero messages. So. What it says here is the error that I have is the class structure interface method must have a return type. I forgot to declare my main function as a type, so I forgot to add the void or the int or you know, whatever I want to make my main function. You'll also notice that much like in some sort of office program, the error has the red little squiggly underline, and if you put your mouse cursor on top of it, it tells you exactly what the error is. So it's actually kind of neat. So down here we're going to close the output box. And this, this down here gives us the output from the compiler, and we can see that it completed with one error. And uh, as you advanced programmers know, a program will compile with warnings, but it will not with errors. So don't forget to do void right there. So I do Control F5, and there's my program. So let's close this. Without using system, I cannot do this. You see how when I type in the word console, the Visual Studio's tendency to find everything that I want does not come up with console. Well, that is because console is not being used because the system class is not being invoked. So much like in C++, for those of you that are familiar with it, in order to use standardize output, you have to use using namespace STD. And if you don't, you have to standardize it by doing STD colon colon and then the command. So this is much like that. So we'll do system and now you see how system shows up so a system is not being assumed anymore so I can do system dot console dot right line there we go and now you guys recognize this hello there control F5 and our program is working even more beautifully than it was before <laughs> Just to add a little bit of diversity to your C-sharp training, we're going to leave it like this. So we're not going to be using system in this tutorial, and I'm sorry for those of you that are upset about that. So I guess the very first thing we like to do is let us, let our users know that the title of our program is C-sharp arrays. Sweet. So the very first array that we're going to talk about is the integer array. And again, this tutorial assumes that you have already gone through the beginner crash course C++ video tutorials where the array is explained in a lot more detail. So keep that in mind. Declaring arrays in C Sharp is much different than declaring arrays in other languages such as C. So we will actually declare an int array such like this. Int and then two square brackets, space, and then the name of the integer array. So we're going to call this test int array. And this is going to be equal to, we're going to declare a new instance of the integer, and it's going to be an integer array. And within these brackets here, we're going to put the maximum index of the array. So we've declared the array, test array, 
made it into a new integer array of three. So if I do control F5, my program works just perfect. So let me close this and let us add some data to this array. So in the interest of saving time, because us programmers are lazy, we'll copy and paste that. And I'm going to do that in a couple of lines. So let me just do this. Since we have an array of three, we're going to have 0, 1, 2, because they are indexed at, starting at 0. We're going to make this equal to 1, the number 1, just an integer. And why don't we just make this one in 4, and we'll just make this one 20. Now let's use our little buddy system, system dot console dot right line and within this we're going to just let the user know that this is our integer array and we'll do we'll do this just to make it look cool copy this line paste it down there erase the stuff and we'll do aha here's what we're gonna do you ready for this let's copy this the test in array and we'll put it inside here in case this also within quotation marks and this is also going to introduce us to another concept, which is just basically breaking commands up across across the line. So we don't have to have commands on the same line in C, just like we don't have to in C sharp. So if we take a look at this right here, I want to continue this to the next line because my text will not fit over here where you guys can see it. So I can press enter, and I can just move this wherever I want because this white space is going to be ignored by the compiler. So I'm going to do test array 0 equals and then I'm going to just print out the value of test array 0. So I should be able to compile this and it should work fine. And it does. Our integer array test array 0 equals 1. So all this is doing is this is just concatenating plus is just the concatenation in between the uh, the the write command. So I'm just doing a string concatenating right next to it this. So let me just copy this a couple more times. We'll just do this. So there's going to be one, and then there's going to be two. So I do integer array one. I'm sorry, yeah, test in array one, and then output one. And this one's going to be two, and this one's going to be two. So hold control and press F5. Here we have our lovely output. So these are the different values of the array, and if I put these two side by side, we can see that we've declared one, four, and 20. I know that was pretty simplistic. Those of you that are familiar with computer programming are going to be very well to adapt to this. It's very simple. It's exactly the same as what you're used to, except the way that it's declared. Character arrays and string arrays and all that kind of stuff, they're all declared the exact same way. So we're going to come down here a couple, and we're just going to, I'm not going to demonstrate it like I did with this, just to save time. So we'll do character, right, this, test, char, array. What do we do now, right? Equals new char uh uh well I don't know, let's do like fifty. Control F five. Alright, good. So it compiles just fine. And you guys know how to use this, right? So then we could do string array test string array and this will be equal to new string. Right? Let's do five. So all this should work fine if we compile it. And it does. So now you guys know the basics of the single dimensional array. So get this down and we're going to come back and we're going to talk some more about some C-sharp programming.